What's up everybody, it's Mark again and welcome back to Swamp and Stomp. Today, we're gonna to be talking about safety while saddle hunting. As always, I wanna remind you guys that what we show you in these videos are just the way that we like to do things. We are by no means authorities on uh, saddle hunting and safety. We just follow the instructions. So make sure you do your due diligence, look into this stuff, look into these knots that we're telling you about. Make sure that you're confident in their ability to stop you from falling. Don't take our word for it. Um, and if you'll go down in the description, you will see there is a disclaimer there uh, releasing all liability. Dude, that is a big deer. And he didn't go 30 yards. Oh my God. <laughs> that was the first buck I've ever shot. Woo, what a rush. Money, that deer is dead. Tagged out, baby. <laughs> you shot one? Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. I saw him go what? down. Before we get into it, I just want to point out, if you like this camo that I'm wearing, you can get it on our website, that is swampandstompllc.com. And if you're new to this channel, make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to it right now because we're going to have lots of saddle tips coming out during the off season. If you're interested in supporting the Swamp and Stomp YouTube channel, make sure you go down in the description and check out some of the different ways that you can do that. You can also save yourself some money with some discount codes that we have with our sponsors. So the reason that I decided to make this video is because I was at an event that we host uh, together with Wood Hunting Saddles. Um, and if you haven't checked out Wood Hunting Saddles yet, make sure you go check them out. You can see this saddle right here. This is their deluxe. And as you can see, it matches the Swamp and Stomp High Pine camo. Um, and you can get that on our website or you can go on their website, woodhuntingsaddles.com. Anyway, uh, that was a little side note. Uh, we were hosting this event, which, uh, um, basically was like a saddle workshop people come and show off you know their saddle set up some of the little tricks little diy things that they do um you know just to kind of try and pass along information and somebody was doing a demonstration of a, a climbing with a, you know a one stick climbing method and um somehow i guess while he was rolling to grab his his stick to move it up to the next step somehow he engaged um his uh delay device which was a, a mad rock safeguard um and it just opened up and dropped him to the floor now luckily he was only like six feet off the ground and he was kind of upright so he landed on his feet um but you know you can imagine if that were to happen to you at height it could be really bad i've been speaking with um the owner of wood hunting saddles about uh you know a way to back up my mad rock safeguard um, and so one thing that he pointed out as being really important is that um, the manufacturer uh, suggests that you do not back this up from the the breaking end of your rope so when you're hanging on your climbing rope um, you know i think a lot of people use a auto block attached somewhere to the bottom of their um their saddle uh, but the problem with that is if you um, if you back this up from there, then you're you're potentially creating a dangerous situation where you're keeping that uh, that tag end under tension, um, and this particular device, and same with the Grigri, requires that that tag end is not under tension in order for it to work properly. So that means that in order to back up a Grigri or a Mad Rock safely, you actually need to back it up above it, which creates kind of a awkward situation but we have a great solution on how to deal with that this year i'm switching to a different rope i've been using this predator rope this is an 11 millimeter or 11.2 or something um, and i'm going to be switching to this sea rope and if you want to get some of this it's really nice rope i believe it's a nine millimeter rope um, you can see it next to the uh, predator rope there um, significantly thinner um, and if you want to get some of this you can get it on the wood hunting saddles website um, they're going to be dealers for this particular rope i'm kind of excited to be switching to something a little bit lighter weight but i do want to try it in the mad rock given that i'm going to this thinner rope um, i definitely see there being some potential 
Uh, for slippage, you know, think about it like this. This is a higher surface area than the thinner rope. So there's more friction generated with a bigger rope. Now I'm going to this thinner rope. I definitely want to back it up. So that brings me to, to the point of this video. I need to figure out a good way to back it up. So here's what I'm going to do. All right, so the first thing, you got to get yourself one of these little friction hitch cords. Um, this one is uh, it's another blue water rope. You can get it from wood hunting saddles, but uh, there's a whole bunch of them. Any, any of them will do. Um, and this is a seven millimeter rope. And it says it right here. It's rated to 2,500 pounds. Um, so plenty, plenty. Um, so anyway, uh, I looked into a few different friction hitches and you can use any any one of them you can use a prusik you can use a swabish um, you know whatever friction hitch you like i'm going to use one that robert taught me which i thought was pretty cool all right guys so what i've got tied on right here this is called a cornell's friction hitch and as you can see it works just like any other friction hitch if i drop myself which i'm going to do right now it'll catch me even if this fails um, i'm going to show you guys how to um how to tie it but the coolest thing about the cornell's friction hitch check this out still under load i can break it and there's not a lot of friction hitches that you can do that with hey have you checked out our podcast yet it's pretty sweet in this week's episode i got together with another youtuber called john lusk and he is an expert in broadheads we talked about the engineering of broadheads and all the factors that you could should consider when you're picking a broadhead that sounds interesting to you go check out the podcast it's called the swamp and stomp podcast and you can find it anywhere that podcasts are found if you're interested in connecting with some like-minded hunters make sure you go check out our facebook group it's called swamp and stomp the group we'll see you there all right guys so here is the cornell's friction hitch a little closer up and as you can see it looks kind of complex um but it's actually relatively easy to tie i'm going to show you how to do it you're going to take your cord split it in half you're gonna put that halfway point right behind your main line. You're gonna take your right side, you're gonna wrap it forwards around four times, like that. See, one, two, three, four. Then you're gonna take the other side, you're gonna cross all of them, go to the other side of your main line, come around the back, over the front of your tag end, and see how there's a cross right there? You're gonna come over the front of your tag end, you're gonna lift up this cross and tuck that tag end behind the cross, just like that. And you snug it all up, and that is your Cornell's hitch. Now the only thing you still need to do is make sure these tag ends are the same length. Right now the right side's a little bit longer, so I'm gonna work it through a little bit and just work it all the way through the knot. So the left side's a bit longer and now they're the same size and as i tug it locks up now you just have to attach the tag ends to your belay device or to the um, carabiner so let me angle you down a little bit you can see the carabiner right here i'm going to tuck that in there move that out of the way do the next one just like that now i'm going to close up the gate and then you just kind of have to like wiggle those loops over the gate and there you go you've got your cornell's knot cornell's hitch sorry so the nice thing is when i go up it'll automatically dress the friction hitch and if i go down it'll catch me but here's the problem when you want to belay down and you still want to have that friction hitch you need to be able to tend the knot from above. And this gets a little bit tricky. And I'm gonna show you a great little trick on how you can tend your friction hitch from above while belaying down. Check this out. All that you're gonna to need to carry extra in your setup is simply a little carabiner. This doesn't have to be weight rated, just a simple little carabiner and a piece of 550 paracord. And this is gonna work like a tender. So I can just keep this clipped onto my saddle and when it's time to belay and I've got this set up, I just clip that onto my main line there and that's my tender. So basically once you have it clipped on there, you just wanna grab it with your hand and just make sure that that tag end is shorter than the tag end of the friction hitch. That way when you go down, it's gonna tend that friction hitch as you go. 
Now, if I were to fall, let go of everything, and I free fall, then the friction hitch still catches me, just like that. And as always, guys, I just want to remind you that we are not the authority when it comes to saddle hunting. These are just things that we do ourselves. These are opinion based um, and you should not take them as advice. Um, so keep that in mind. You are responsible for your own actions. We are not. Make sure you do your homework. Check out these knots I'm telling you about um, and make sure you are confident um, in, in the knots. Do not just take our word for it. Uh, but with that said, this is what I'm going to be running this coming season. Uh, hopefully you guys find that helpful. And um, if you uh, have any questions, just drop them down in the comments. Uh, me, Danny, or uh, even Robert from Wood Hunting Saddles will probably jump in and answer you. So uh, with uh, without any further ado, make sure you guys are subscribed and we'll catch you guys next week.